Hi guys, and welcome back to yet another practical Rhino Jewelry CAD tutorial. I'm Jack, and in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to make this four claw twist solitaire engagement ring. As well as the how, I'll also be explaining the why, breaking down my decision making process along the way. With that short introduction out of the way, let's get stuck in. Before we get started, let's just have a quick look at my setup. First of all, layers. Let's delete all the layers apart from the default. So I'll click on layer one, hold down shift, click on layer five, then click the delete layer icon here in the layers panel. So now we've got just the default layer and any of the layers we need, we'll add them as we go. Now let's focus our attention on the bottom left of the screen. So for this tutorial, we need the end, mid and quad snaps on to begin with, also project turned on. And then if we look at the bottom center of the screen, we're gonna have orthographic on, O snap, gumball and record history. Now make sure that if you right click record history, you've got always record history and update children both checks. Quite important for this tutorial as we'll be using the history function. Now let's import our six millimeter gemstone file to work around. So we'll go to file, import, find our six millimeter round diamond cut model. I'll put a download link in the description of the video so you can download this and work along with me. And then we click open. Now let's add in a ring rail. So we'll maximize the front view We'll create a new layer first, go to the layers panel, new layer icon, and type in ring rail. Make sure we're active on this layer by clicking in the C for current column, we get a tick, and we'll change the color of this layer by clicking on the black swatch, and we'll change this to brown. Now I'd like the finger size for this to be a UK size M, so that's approximately 167 millimeters diameter. So we'll go to the circle command in the panel on the left, left click, Center of circle will be zero as usual for the center of our world and press enter. And then diameter 16.7, making sure that diameter is before the numbers on the left hand side of the command line and press enter. Now we can move the stone up to the position it will need to be sat. So I'll select my stone first, gumball will come on, let's zoom in a little bit. Click and hold the green gumball arrow and drag it up until the cooler of the stone just about sits on the ring rail. And now we'll move it up by a given distance. Now I want this to sit approximately 1.5 millimeters above the finger. So I'll click my gemstone, click once this time on the green gumball arrow, don't hold it down, just left click once, and I'm going to type 1.5 and that will move it up in the Y axis, 1.5 millimeters. Now we can start to plan the claw position. So let's go into the top view, zoom in, I'm going to change my viewpoint to shaded, and let's make ourselves active on the black layer. So I'll double click on the C on default, now we're on the black layer. Now let's plan the claws in the top view with a circle. So I'll go to the circle command here, left hand side of the screen. Center of circle, I'm going to snap to 12 o'clock on my stone, I get a nice projected end snap, left click. And now we're going to enter a diameter of 1.3. So I would like my finished claw to be 1.2, but as usual we add a little bit extra material for the cleanup process, so we type 1.3 and enter. Now this has currently sat a little bit too much into my claw by about 50%. This should be no more than a third, but ideally a quarter of the claw's diameter intersecting with the girdle of the stone. So I'm going to move this up until it's approximately a quarter. So that's about there. So you can see I've got a quarter intersecting approximately, and then the other three quarters are clear of the stone's girdle. So now we can array this to create the other four claws, or the other three claws rather I should say. So we'll type array polar Center of array is zero, enter. Number of items is four, so I type four and enter. Angle to fill, we want a full circle, so I type 360 and then hit enter. Gives me a preview, I'm happy with the preview, so I hit enter one more time to apply. Now let's go into perspective and see what we've got. So obviously, because we had project on down at the bottom of the screen here, it's thrown our circles onto the C plane, so we need to bring them up to the correct height. So I'm just going to drag a box around them to select all four of them. Then we'll go into the front view. Then using the gumball movement arrow, I'll drag this up until they're roughly in line with the girdle of my stone. Okay, so now we can start to give them some sort of three-dimensional form. So let's make a new layer and we'll call this claws. And we'll make this layer purple. And we'll also make sure we're active. Now we're just going to extrude these into some simple open surfaces so it gives us a start point to blend into when we're blending from the shank into the claw. So let's select all four claws by holding down shift and clicking them in turn. Then I'll go into the right view I think 
and then we'll go to surface, extrude planar curve, and straight. Now make sure that both sides equals no and solids equals no, because you don't need to be closed at this stage. And all I'm going to do is just snap to the table of my stone. Don't worry, we will be making them longer later to allow for the setting process. Now back into perspective, and let's change our viewpoint style to shaded. So now we have the kind of top part of the claws in place. So we have a place to blend to from the shank, but we don't have a shank. So let's create that. Now we're just going to do a simple round section shank that covers three quarters of the ring's circumference. So let's draw a profile. Let's go into the right view. And we'll do this on the default layer. So I'll go into the default layer on this C column. Then we'll go to the circle command. And we're going to use a two point circle this time. So I click two point circle in the command line. Start a diameter, we're going to snap to the back quad of my ring rail, left click, and then we're going to type 2.1, because I want the finished diameter to be two millimeters, so I'm going to type 2.1, so we've got a little bit of extra material for tolerance. So I need to choose which direction this is going in, we're obviously going straight down, because we're at the back of the ring, left click, and that will apply the two point circle. Now let's sweep it into the shank. So let's make ourselves a new layer and call it shank. New layer, shank, we'll change the color of this layer to dark green. OK, and obviously, as usual, we'll make ourselves active on that layer. Now for the sweep. So let's type in sweep one into the command bar, enter, select the rail. That's the ring rail. Left click. My sweep shape is the cross section that we've just drawn. And I press enter. Now, it's quite important that we move this seam onto the inside of the shank so that it's easier for when we're doing our blending into the claws later. So I'm just going to left click once on the white ball. That will release it so I have control over it. And we're going to snap to the quad snap on the inside of the shank and left click to apply. So I'm happy with the seam position. So now we just press enter to run the sweep. The rail options come up. We're just going to leave it as the standard options, which are free form and do not change cross sections. Then we click OK or press enter. Now we have a full shank in place. Now I said we only want three quarters of the shank because I want to blend from the shank roughly here and here into our claws. So we need to trim the top quarter away. So let's go into the front view, maximize that. Let's make ourselves active on the default layer. So let's go to the polyline command, left click. Start of the polyline is zero. I type zero and enter. And then to begin with, we're just going to draw it straight up. Left click, enter to finish. So we've got a vertical line. Now we'll just rotate it 45 degrees. So I'll type rotate while it's selected. Hit enter, center of rotation. We can just hit zero, type zero for the center of our world, press enter. And then for the angle, we're just going to type 45. Make sure that copy equals no and hit enter again. So now we've got a 45 degree line on the left. We just need one on the right so we can do a successful cut. So we'll select this line, type in mirror. We can just press Y on the keyboard or click Y axis in the command line. Press enter. And now we've got one mirror to the right. Now I'm going to select both of these curves by holding down shift from multiple select, then I'll click the trim icon from the toolbar on the left, and I'll simply click on the shank between these two lines somewhere, and then press enter to finish the trim operation. So if we go into perspective, we can see that we've now just got a three quarter shank, and we can delete these two black lines because they're no longer needed. So now we can start the process of creating the surfaces that will transition from the shank into the claws. Let's zoom in a bit on our claws and stone. So now we need to extract some isocurves from the right hand side of both of these two claws so we can blend from there onto the inside of the shank. So let's do that by typing in extract isocurve. Surface for extraction, we'll first use the front claw, left click. Make sure that your line is vertical. If it's not, just click toggle in the command line and it will change direction. And then make sure that you snap to the quad snap at the right hand side or the three o'clock position on this front claw left click, and then we don't need to extract any more isocurves from this surface, so we just hit enter. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing on this claw. So to repeat the command, I can just press enter on the keyboard, click that surface, snap to the same end snap at three o'clock, left click, and again end to finish extracting. So now we have an end curve to blend to from the inside of the shank. To make things a little clearer, let's just turn off the ring rail, and now we can start the blending process. So let's type blend, CRV into the command line. That's the command for blend curve. Enter. Curve to blend. Let's first start by clicking somewhere near the end of the inside seam of the shank here. 
and then we'll click somewhere near the bottom end of the IC curve to be extracted first on the front claw. Left click. Then we have this come up. We get a nice blend from 1 to 2. And if we look at the Adjust Curve Blend Options box, we can see that I've got Tangency selected for both 1 and 2. So if yours is different, if yours is Curvature, for example, or Position, make sure that you choose Tangency 1 and 2. And the numbers 1 and 2 just refer to the ends of the curve. So this end is 1, and you can see the 1 symbol here, and this end is 2, so you can see the end symbol here. Both Tangency, OK. Now we can repeat that for the claw on the right. So again, hit Enter on the keyboard to repeat the last command we did. Left-click the inside of the shank seam. Left-click somewhere near the bottom end of the ISO curve that we extracted on the right. Again, both Tangency, and we hit OK. So now we can start to do our sweeps. Let's first make a new layer to put these transition sweeps onto. So I'll go to New Layer, we'll call it Transitions. We'll change the colour of the layer to red and make sure we're active on the layer. Now for the first sweep, so I'll type sweep 1, rail, is the curve we just blended. We'll choose the curve on the bottom of the front claw and then the inside edge of the surface on the shank. Hit enter. I want both of my seams to be in the same position, so I'm going to put them on the inside where they meet the rail. So I've changed the first one, left click, left click, and again left click, left click. Make sure both the arrows are pointing in the same direction. If not, just flip one of them so they both face the same way. doesn't matter which way they face, as long as they both face the same direction. And hit enter. And so do our sweep. We're just going to click the standard settings for the moment with free form and do not change cross sections. And click OK. Now I'll repeat that for the next claw. I'll press enter. My rail, again, is the blended curve. First sweep shape, bottom curve of the claw. And then we'll again choose the inside of the surface edge of the shank. Enter just as seems as before. Both arrows facing the same way, hit enter, and that will complete our sweep. Now that last sweep has potentially left us with a few problems that we need to address. The first one is that our stone is intersecting far too much into this surface. And also we've got a little bit of an undercut as this surface transitions into the bottom of the claw. Let me turn off the gem layer and you'll see that better. You see the undercut here. So that will also create a weak point. So let's correct that now. We're going to do that by rebuilding the rail sweep curve. So I'll select the sweep curve, type rebuild, and we're going to change the point count from 4 to 6, and make sure that you've got delete input checked and also preserve end tangent directions, and click OK. So we can see that's instantly fixed the undercut issue. Now we just need to fix the intersection issue. So we're going to go into the front view, Make sure we're in wireframe or ghosted so we can see the intersection. Turn on our ring rail so we know how far down we can come with the new transition. I'm going to select the rail curve. Now you can see we've got a nice convenient control point just here, just to the right of the coolant of the stone. Using the green arrowhead and the gumball, I'm going to pull this down until we just about hit the top of the ring rail. And now you can see it's pulled this part of the line down. We've got a very slight intersection with the coolant of the stone, but I'm not too worried about that. And we've only got a very slight intersection into our ring rail, so we shouldn't be adjusting the finger size. Now let's copy rotate these two transition surfaces onto the other side. So I'll go into the top view, select both surfaces with shift click and type rotate. Enter. Center rotation is zero. Make sure that copy equals yes. Now we want to do a rotation of 180 degrees, so I type 180, hit enter. Gives me a preview, hit enter one more time to apply. And there you can see now we have the other two transitions into the two remaining claws. Now we've potentially got an issue with these two transitions here because they overlap each other. What we really want is for them to twist or flow around one another. So we'll do that by changing the rail curve again. So we'll select the same rail curve as before, the black line here, and curve. We'll go into ghosted. Now we can see the control points. And we're going to select the same one as before, just to the right at the bottom of the coolant. If you're struggling to find that in Ghosted, go into Wireframe. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Ghosted. Now I'm going to move this rather than down to the left, so it should then bypass one another. If I click and hold the left gumball green arrow, drag it to the left, you'll see that when I release it, because we've got the history enabled, it updates the sweep, so they're starting to go around each other. I can probably go a little bit further, so I'll keep pulling it and releasing. Maybe going to Shaded now. And what I don't want to happen is to create a gap underneath that potentially cause an issue with investment inclusions. So I'm just going to pull this in until they just overlap a little bit. That should be perfect. So we've got a nice flow around, but still a strong connection between those two transitions. 
Now all we've got left to do to finish the model is join together and close what surfaces we can and extend the height of the claws so it's suitable for setting. So let's join together what we can. I'm going to click the front claw top, hold down shift, click its connecting transition sweep, the shank, the back transition sweep and the back claw top. Click join and type cap to close it off into one close object. Then we'll do the left claw and the transition sweep underneath it which joins into the shank on the right. So we'll join and cap. Then we'll do the same with the two remaining surfaces on the right. So join and cap. And now we have all closed poly surfaces so we should be good for printing. Let's just double check that. I'll turn off my gem layer. Go to analyze, edge tools, show edges. Drag a box around all of my poly surfaces. Press enter. And then make sure that where it says show we've got a naked edge selected. We can't see any purple lines. But more importantly if we look in the command line it says it's found 31 edges in total. But most importantly, no naked edges, no non-manifold edges. So that means the model is watertight and should be good for printing. The last thing we need to do now is extend the height of these claws so they're suitable for setting. So let's go into our front view, turn on the gem layer, and we first need to determine how much taller we need to make the claws. Well, one way to do that is to copy the stone with transform copy and place it from its coolit to its girdle, like so. Left click, right click to finish. And then we're going to extend the tops of these claws until they're roughly in line with the girdle of the new stone I've placed on top. So in order to select just the top surfaces to stretch them up, I'm first going to turn the gem layer off, hold down Control and Shift on the keyboard, and drag a box left to right so just the tops of those surfaces are selected. So if I just go into perspective for a moment, you can see all I've got are the surfaces at the top highlighted back into the front view. If we turn our gem layer back on, I'm just going to grab the green gumball arrow, pull it up, until we're in line with the girdle of the new stone and now they should be approximately the right height and we can delete the stone on top and if we go back into perspective we can see that the model is now complete well i hope you found this tutorial useful guys if you've got a question or a comment drop it in the comment section and i'll try my best to respond well thanks for watching if you'd like to inquire about booking online rhino training with me just drop me an email the address is in the description and if you appreciate the free lessons I'm creating, you can say thanks by treating me to the price of a coffee via buymeacoffee.com. Just click on the link in the description. And finally, don't forget to subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss my next video. See you next time.